Hey guys, welcome back to Virtual Sunday School. I am so excited to share this book with you today. It's about two women I greatly admire. It's about two friends, the first named Eleanor Roosevelt, she was first lady of the United States, and Amelia Earhart, and she was the first women, woman to fly solo over the uh, Atlantic Ocean, and they were friends, and I'm gonna tell you that story. So, hold on a second, let me flip this around, and I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite stories. See the plane? <laughs> Getting so excited. Okay, it's called, oh, I don't think we can see that whole thing. Sorry about that. Amelia and Eleanor go for a ride. And this is a true story. Let's pull that cord. All right, here we go. Amelia and Eleanor were birds of a feather. Eleanor was outspoken and determined. So was Amelia. Amelia was daring and liked to try things other women wouldn't even consider. Eleanor was the very same. So when Eleanor discovered that her friend Amelia was coming to town to give a speech, she naturally said, bring your husband and come for dinner at my house. You can even sleep over. It wasn't unusual for two friends to get together. But Eleanor was Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady of the United States who lived in the White House with her husband, President Franklin Roosevelt. Amelia was Amelia Earhart, the celebrated aviator who had been the first female pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. And when two of the most famous and adventurous women in the world got together, something exciting was bound to happen. Washington, D.C. I tell you, the paintings in this book are amazing. In a guest room at the White House, Amelia and her husband, GP, dressed for dinner. Amelia pulled on the wrong, oh, sorry, on the long white evening gloves that were so different from the ones she wore sometimes when flying. Many people didn't understand why a woman would want to risk her life on a plane. But Amelia has said it more than once. It's for the fun of it. Besides, she loved the feeling of independence she had when she was in the cockpit. She carefully folded a gift for Eleanor, a silk sharp scarf that matched her own. The powder blue with streaks of indigo reminded Amelia of the morning sky. Put on her gloves there. Right. Meanwhile, uh, Eleanor dressed for dinner too. Her brother Hall would be escorting her for this evening because the president had a meeting to attend, but Eleanor was used to that. She pulled on the long white evening gloves that were so different from the ones she wore when she was driving. Then she peeked out the window and the brand new car at the brand new car that just had been delivered that afternoon. She couldn't wait to drive it. Many people thought it was too bold and dangerous for a woman to drive a car, especially the first lady of the United States, but Eleanor always gave the same answer. Is practical, that's all. Besides, she loved the feeling of independence she had when she was behind the wheel. It was a brisk and cloudless April evening. The guests had gathered in the red room. The table looked elegant, as even small dinner parties the White House can be. Eleanor and Hall greeted Amelia and GP, as well as several reporters and a photographer. Amelia gave Eleanor the scarf. I just love it, Eleanor. It's just like yours. Dinner started with George Washington's crab chowder. This is delicious, said Amelia. But if soup of the White House is such a fancy name, what will dessert be called? Perhaps Abraham Lincoln's peach cobbler, or maybe Thomas Jefferson's custard? They laughed as everyone took turns guessing. By the time they got to the rose duck, the conversation had turned to flying. Mrs. Roosevelt just received her student's pilot license, says one of the reporters. Amelia wasn't surprised. She had been, one, had been the one to encourage Eleanor. She knew her friend could do anything she set her mind to. I'll teach him myself, offered Amelia. I accept. Tell us, Amelia, what's it like to fly at night in the dark?
Everyone at the table leaned closer to hear. Very few people in the whole world had ever flown at night, and Amelia was one of them. Amelia's eyes sparkled. The stars glitter all about and seemed close enough to, to touch. At higher elevations, the clouds below shine white with dark islands where the night seas show through. I've seen the planet Venus setting on the horizon, and I've circled cities of twinkling lights. In the capital city at night, asked Eleanor. There's just no describing it, said Amelia. You'll just have to experience it on a clear night when you can see forever. Why, we should go tonight. We could fly the loop to Baltimore and be back in no time. The Secret Service men protested. This hasn't been approved. Nonsense, it's Eleanor. If Amelia Earhart can fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean, I can certainly take a short flight to Baltimore and back. Before dessert could be served, Amelia had called Eastern Air Transport and arranged a flight. What was that? Just talking at dinner one night, and next thing you know, you're going for a, an airplane ride? Within the hour, Amelia and Eleanor boarded the Curtis Condor twin motor airplane. For a moment, both women, the women looked up at the mysterious night sky. Then without changing their gloves, Amelia slipped into the cockpit and took the wheel. The plane rolled down the runway faster and faster. Lights from the airstrip flashed in front of them, and they lifted into the dark. That cockpit, isn't that, isn't that beautiful? How amusing it is to see a girl in a white evening dress and high-heeled shoes flying a plane, Eleanor said. Amelia laughed as she made a wide sweep over Washington, D.C. and turned off all the lights in the plane. Out the window, the Potomac River glistened with moonshine. The Capitol Dome reflected a soft golden halo, and the enormous light-drenched monuments looked like tiny miniatures. Soon the peaceful countryside gave way to shadowy woodlands. The Chesapeake Bay became a meandering outline on the horizon. And even though they knew it wasn't so, it seemed as if the plane had crawled slowly through the star-struck space. Eleanor marveled. It's like sitting on top of the world. How beauty, the, beautiful the city looks. I see the White House. When it was time to land, Amelia carefully took the plane down. A group of reporters had gathered, anxious to ask questions. Mrs. Roosevelt, did you feel safe knowing a girl was flying the ship? Just as safe, said Eleanor. Did you fly the plane, Mrs. Roosevelt, asked one reporter. What part did you like best, asked another. I enjoyed it so much, and no, I didn't actually fly the plane. Not yet, but someday I intend to. I was thrilled by the city lights, the brilliance of the blinking pinpoints below. Amelia smiled. She knew just how, Ele how Eleanor felt. As the Secret Service agents drove them slowly back to the White House, Amelia and Eleanor agreed that there was nothing quite as exciting as flying. What could compare? Well, they admitted maybe the closest thing would be driving in a fast car on a straightaway road with a stiff breeze blowing in your face. Arms linked, they walked up the steps to the White House. Eleanor whispered something to Amelia, and then they hesitated, letting the rest of the group walk ahead. Are you coming inside, Mrs. Roosevelt, someone asked. But by then, they had wrapped their silk scarves around their necks and were hurrying towards Eleanor's new car. Without changing her gloves, Eleanor quickly slipped into the driver's seat and took her turn at the wheel. With the wind in their hair and the brisk air stinging their cheeks, they flew down the road. Look at them go. And after they had taken a ride about the city streets of Washington, D.C., they finally headed back to the, to the White House. Some night they're having, huh? For dessert, they had Eleanor, Eleanor Roosevelt's Pink Cloud on Angel Food Cake. Ooh, sounds yummy. The end. Wow, what a great night that was. They got to fly, they got to drive in a car, all that freedom. And it was two women, remember. And you know, there were times that women couldn't always do these things. So it was exciting not only that they were women, but they were two good friends that got to spend some great time together. I hope you have a great day. Bye.